year three of the ACC Network, and we kick off the live game calendar on the women's soccer side with number three, North Carolina, home at Dorrance Field, hosting number 13, Arkansas, in a tremendous matchup. Both teams in the NCAA round of 16 last spring. Jonathan Yardley and Angela Hughley's with you. Two years ago, Angela, you were ribbon cutting on the ACC Network. How excited are you for year three of women's soccer? I am so excited for this season, women's soccer. That ribbon cutting was a little, you know, past action. So let's get this third season started here within the ACC conference. All right, turning to today's action, North Carolina, one of the favorites in the ACC with Florida State and with Virginia. And they are led at the back by one of the top talents in the country in Macy Bell. Yeah, Macy Bell, as Anson Dorrance says, who rules the air. She, the way that she defends is exceptional, but what she does also in the air is fantastic. We see how she is able to get up above all the rest of the players. Taking a look off of this corner kick here, this set piece, how she gets up off the ground. Look at where her feet are in comparison to the rest of those defenders there. Is able to get up and put that one away. Also an attacking threat for UNC as well. And that's going to be critical, that aerial game, because Arkansas is one of the most direct teams in the country, but they also have one of the most dynamic attackers in the country in Parker Goins. Parker Goins on that Mac Herman watch list is someone that UNC is going to need to take very good care of in that defense for them because she is the one who is going to look to get up in the attack, score some goals, and really lead this Arkansas squad. Two years ago, North Carolina was unbeaten, was number one in the country, went to Fayetteville, lost 2 nothing with Goins scoring one of those. Razorbacks trying to pull the upset of the Tar Heels. Lineups and kickoff are next. One of the most direct and maybe the most entertaining college soccer games you could ask for, Arkansas and North Carolina. For the Razorbacks, they opened Thursday at Duke. They led 1-0, but they lost 3-1. They didn't look like themselves. This is the starting lineup we think is going to go out there. Colby Hale doesn't really tell us much. These are the 11 where they go, Angela, anybody's guess. And potentially in that 3-4-3 formation, Warner and Goal potentially could have some action. So having a strong game out of her, but really being able to move that ball around, playing for 90 minutes against the tough UNC squad. On the North Carolina side, it's clear what you're going to get. This is the formation for the starting group. It'll look different when the reserves come in, but a lot of talent here. You're focused on Meza in the middle. Yeah, that one three five two formation and shape out of that first starting lineup and Meza drawing some uh, likeness to a little bit of a Messi-esque type of player, but she'll be dominant in that midfield, creating some playmaking and getting Jones and Murphy into the attack. Don't put too high expectations on her or anything with uh, <laughs> that kind of comparison. <laughs> Anson Dorrance, uh, you know the name, you know the face, and you know what to expect from North Carolina teams. Relentless pressure, up to 21 players you'll see uh, in each half. They will all get after it. Taking on Colby Hale in Arkansas, he considers himself and what he's trying to do a little bit in the mold of Anson Dorrance and calls North Carolina the gold standard as North Carolina and Arkansas prepare for a moment of silence before this one. Tremendous matchup when they met two years ago. It was one of the biggest moments, maybe the biggest, in Arkansas program history. Now they try to take aim at the Tar Heels on their home turf. North Carolina coming off of a comfortable, in the end, 4-1 win over Washington, a team they had just edged in the NCAA tournament last spring, 1-0. Very young North Carolina team. We'll tell you about some of those new faces, but impressive in the opener Thursday, trying to complete a 2-0 weekend. Underway, 
on the ACC Network, year number three. And on game number two of opening weekend for North Carolina in white, Arkansas in red. I'm Jonathan Yardley alongside the Virginia and U.S. national team great Angela Hughley. So glad you're watching with us. Angela, college soccer matchups are often contrast in styles. Today it's a little bit more of who can do this style best. Definitely, and I think a little bit of a, a setting the stage for the season for both teams, for Arkansas, for UNC, being able to test some of their weaknesses right now, expose a little bit of that, but still going after the win. So really taking a lot from these games and Arkansas to, a two game road trip as well. We asked the coaches, we asked Anton Dorrance, why did you go to Fayetteville two years ago? And we asked Colby Hale, what are you trying to accomplish with this opening swing at Duke and at North Carolina? And it was all about being prepared for the kind of games that you'll see in November. Of course, we're just coming off an NCAA tournament in April and May, all played in North Carolina. Tar Heels reached the College Cup for the third straight year, and both of these teams lost to the eventual champs, the number 11 seed, Santa Clara. I'm still shocked that they pulled that off against Florida State in the final. Florida State starts the year number one and beat number nine, Texas A&M on Thursday in their opener, but there is heavy competition this year in the ACC and elsewhere. And really interesting to see also, as you mentioned, Jonathan, just having that championship in a non-traditional time frame for college soccer and, and how these teams do respond to the different loads and demands. We've heard Anson Dorrance talking about the time management and loads of these players and being able to play reserves at different times of the game as well. This is Emily Murphy, maybe the freshman about whom they're most excited. Her cross couldn't find Della Peruta. This is Rachel Jones, one of the vets on this North Carolina team, and her shot is deflected away for a corner kick. Senior, one of only a few North Carolina has from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Six goals, six assists last year for Rachel Jones, who's already started law school. I don't know how you're, you can be a 1L and play sports at the same time, having uh, <laughs> some close family members who have gone through that, but she's doing it. First corner of the game for North Carolina, Avery Patterson to deliver. 20 is Libby Moore, back out wide for Patterson. The fourth minute just underway at Dorrance Field. Third season hosting games in this glittering facility. It has really uh, helped their recruiting. 21-0 at Dorrance Field. That'll do. Only four goals allowed here. And we told you Arkansas lost to Duke Thursday night on their road trip to this part of the country. Angela, what are your hacks for the Razorbacks this afternoon? Especially after that last game versus Duke, maybe not their traditional style of play, but really playing to their strengths, playing that aggressive, direct way that Arkansas can do it. But also for a full 90-minute match, when you're playing against a UNC, uh, as Coach Hale says, on a Sunday, maybe one of the toughest matchups in college soccer sports, you have to play for 90 minutes with the depth that they have, but not just on their bench, but also from starting to finish. 30, 30 plus players on this UNC squad. I'd say we're going to see we're going to see everybody on both sides. On the North Carolina side, what do they need to do to start 2 and 0? And I think because of the way that Arkansas can play that direct style and putting some pressure on them, just really being able to be patient in that attack when they have the ball. And then also looking to win those first and second balls, making sure they're dominant in that aerial battle to ma match against a really good Arkansas squad that, that can dominate in the air. 
Yeah, and that's kind of the thing with Arkansas, Angela. Thursday, they led 1-0. Uh, they scored 21st minute on their third shot of the game. Shots were 3-2 at that point. They finished 19-3 in Duke's favor. 17 straight shots by the Blue Devils. They scored two penalty kicks in the second half. Arkansas wasn't happy about the penalty kicks, but the most important thing, Angela, they didn't look like the Arkansas that we're used to seeing. Right, and I think that's definitely, when you when you think about tactics, you know, and, and, and talking um, with Coach Hale, and it's, he said, you know, it's not really about the tactics of the game when we're coming out against UNC. It's really just being able to play our style of, of soccer, and, and that means more of a mental challenge for Arkansas coming out you know, first five minutes, what they're able to do, playing direct and getting some more shots on goal in that offense as well. I mean, this is a team that literally has a shot clock at training. And when the ball <laughs> turns over, you get an extra point in your competition if you get the shot off within the appropriate amount of time for that exercise. That's almost unheard of in the collegiate game. How do you go 70 minutes without a shot? It's, it's right. stunning. This is Jessica De, De Filippo, the Quebecois transfer from Louisville, shaken up here after the collision gets, yeah, with Patterson. On that head there. Referee does a good job of stopping the game immediately with the head collision. So they haven't subbed on for her yet. So Arkansas with 10 at the moment as that arrives at the near post and is over the top. Talia Della Peruta from wide left is really making some good runs into the box. And Della Peruto, just a, a player, knows how to get into that attack, make herself available. Is able to put some pressure to that near post. Create that corner Reagan kick opportunity. Swindle was the defender who got her foot to it for the second UNC corner of the early going. Rachel Jones with the left foot. Now a chance for Arkansas to counter. Playing it through, tremendous speed. And coming all the way back, Sam Meza to close down Taylor Malum. And Arkansas can't connect in the final third once again. It's a real good look by Arkansas though in that transition. On the run, Emily Colton, the freshman, couldn't connect with Emily Murphy. And it'll be an Arkansas goal kick, but promising sign for the Tar Heels early. Hannah Warner was busy Thursday night, seven saves. Not going to be happy with the first goal she allowed to Michelle Cooper from distance, slipped under her arms. The other two were penalty kicks, but... Colby Hale and anyone who watched that game uh, would tell you it could have been 5 nothing if Hannah Warner wasn't in goal. First full year at Arkansas. She transferred in in the spring from Oklahoma State and was the starter for the five contests they had in the spring. Just great awareness Warner has and, and quickness of feet, feet as well, but just her ability to shot stop. I think is exceptional as displayed in that last game. So De Filippo back on the field, wide left for Arkansas. So we are 11 against 11. Told you she's from Quebec. We'll talk more about the Canadian influence or the SEC's influence on Canada at halftime. And this will be a free kick to the Razorbacks. Haley Van Fossen, the All-American, shaken up. Thursday was her 86th career game. She's one of four five-year starters Arkansas has, thanks to the extra year of eligibility afforded by the pandemic, or afforded by the NCAA in light of the pandemic. Thursday was her 86th game. It was only the second time she's ever come off the bench. Back in the starting lineup today. That's headed on. Offside flag was up. It'll be a free kick. That's that direct service even 
that Arkansas does so well with. You can see a couple players just really close, actually, when that ball was played. <laughs> Kylie Delaney going forward. DeFilippo drags her shot wide. But there is Arkansas's first shot in 81 minutes. Am I doing the math right? That's too long. <laughs> But I think very good for Arkansas getting in that attack. You can see that Dickey just trying to find her space there. De Filippo trying to do a nice little chip. Not enough to test Dickey, but again, already a better look out of Arkansas in this first 10 minutes of this first half. Here's Murphy turned down a contract offer with Chelsea to come play at the collegiate level at UNC. And she scored against Washington Thursday, 35 in white. She's keeping Isabel Cox off the field, by the way. Cox will see as a sub. There's Murphy, one of the most complete forwards Anson Doran said has ever arrived on campus. Jill playing it ahead to Filippo looked offside and she is free kick to Carolina at the back. Now Wednesday our ACC football road trip rolls on a visit to Florida State. Sit down with Mike Norvell some of the Seminole stars and a look around the campus in Tallahassee. One hour show starting at 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. One app one tap as the ACC football road trip continues. Prime for a big year in multiple sports at North Carolina. Field hockey always outstanding. Women's soccer always outstanding. Men's soccer always contending. And football, they do have their eyes on Mac Brown's squad this year as well. Collision between Murphy and Van Fossen about 10, 15 yards away from the ball. And Christina Uncle, the referee, going to discuss it. Murphy just on the ground there. <laughs> Try, <laughs> trying to take advantage of a little opportunity, I believe. Say, Arkansas had some gamesmanship to get Tess Bode a yellow card from Duke on Thursday as well. That's about the third throw in Arkansas has had today that never went in bounds. I mean, that's just giving the ball away needlessly. was onside and the cross on one bounce into the arms of Claudia Dickey. Only one training session before she started Thursday night dealing with a couple of nagging injuries. Blocked by Jones. UNC has players arriving in the box. Murphy's the target. Puts it right where Hannah Warner can get to it. It's really good quick transitions here and opportunities coming from them. Jones did a nice job slowing that ball up, waiting for Murphy to get into that box. Anson Dorrance's latest foray into recruiting England. Obviously had Lucy Bronze several years ago. More recently, Alessia Russo and Lada Wubinmoy, big parts of UNC. They were supposed to be seniors last year, but given the pandemic, went ahead and signed professionally in England. And we'll see Ruby Grant off the Tar Heel bench. She had two goals Thursday night. 
I don't know how it works having uh, Chelsea and Arsenal players in the same locker room, but they seem to figure it out. <laughs> Temperature in the high 80s this afternoon. We do expect to have hydration breaks in this one. A little bit of humidity as well. Parker Goins, they like her in the penalty area, but they also like the long throw. Kept alive, and Dickey is first to it. Arkansas still finding some success, I think, also with Carolina in that three back shape and formation, just some pockets out wide, able to play make, get some balls in behind, but really starting to create some offensive opportunities, even creating some set pieces too, those corner kicks. Taylor Malum not happy with the call as Emily Moxley one of the newest Tar Heels ushered that out for a goal kick. And we will get the first change. This is health related. Talia Della Peruta didn't play Thursday. She's just coming back from injury. And so minutes restriction for her. Paige Tolentino comes on. If you're watching college soccer, you probably already know. But once you come out in the first half, you can't re-enter till the second. In the second half, each player gets one chance to re-enter. We expect Arkansas and North Carolina to take full advantage of those substitution provisions. That's something that Anson Dorrance had mentioned. He's, he almost calls himself a, a puzzle master in terms of his ability to game manage and, and manage minutes out of his players during a game. Taya Della Peruta, one of in Anson's mind, one of his best players. So really being able to bring her back in after the injury, struggled to, to get back, but was able to perform during preseason. Goins was trying to reach to Filippo there, but too far. I think he also said, I substitute for a living, which would certainly <laughs> be an apt description if you've ever played against or tried to broadcast a North Carolina game. You have to be ready for the second unit. This is Moxley to throw in. Anson Dorrance called her a wonderful surprise. Transfer from UNC Wilmington. She had played for the North Carolina Courage, though, in high school under the North Carolina assistant, Damon Neha. So the relationship was already there. She's played with half the players. And she had five goals, eight assists two years ago for UNC Wilmington. Just arrived in Chapel Hill this fall, or this summer, I should say. And just really one of those players who fits a, a real need, I'd say, for, for UNC. And in a really challenging position, able to get up and down that field and that flank. And really more of that complete player. And, and Anson said, you know, Moxley came in and this was an area where they were really thin and really was able to fill into that position. And it's, it's really so tough to get someone who can bring all those qualities, play both sides of the ball, defend well, good in the air as well. And Moxley is really being able to, to prove her worth here for this team. Just one shot for each team here in the 20th minute. That'll stay with Arkansas, but after hitting the referee, Christina Uncle will stop the play. North Carolina 18-2 last year. Only losses the ACC championship game to Florida State and the NCAA semifinal to Santa Clara. And they certainly did not feel at full strength by then, having lost Emily Fox and Taylor Otto to the NWSL draft between the fall and spring seasons. Oh. 
This is Kylie Delaney, sophomore from Jacksonville, Arkansas. Five starts a year ago, but they think she could be the best right back in the SEC. Rachel Jones trying to hold this up for North Carolina and start the counter. Here's Murphy. Couldn't get on to the end of it, and Van Fossen able to clear for Arkansas. We'll get Isabel Cox coming on in place of Rachel Jones. Terrific game Thursday off the bench. Set up one goal, scored another. I mean, you talk about four goals, four assists last year, 10 goals in her first two years. And she's got to come off the bench this year. She'll get her chance when we come back following our first hydration break. No score yet, Arkansas and North Carolina on a soccer Sunday. One of the reasons this game's such a big deal, two years ago, North Carolina made the trip to Fayetteville, and in the second half, the Razorbacks got him. Anna Potagil with the first goal, Parker Goins added a second, and it was a first win ever over a number one team for Arkansas. Landmark win that trip two years ago, and now Arkansas returns the favor coming to Chapel Hill, and we're kind of waiting for Either team to get going offensively. Angela, not a lot of chances either. Soccer games on this Sunday afternoon from Dorrance Field, Chapel Hill. Jonathan Yardley and Angela Hughley's watching with you. North Carolina and Arkansas now. Notre Dame and Indiana at four. Wake Forest and High Point at seven. You get maybe an hour break, maybe a half hour if we go to overtime between games to walk the dog, get some snacks, and get back for the other ones. We hope you'll stick with us. Women's soccer underway this weekend, men's soccer next weekend. A lot of soccer on the ACC network all fall. North Carolina in white, Arkansas in red and black. Become one of the most consistent programs in the country, the Razorbacks. Seven NCAA tournament appearances the last eight years after they were 0 for 28 until Colby Hale arrived. This is DeFilippo working against Emerson Elgin, the freshman from New Jersey. And Arkansas able to win it back in a hurry, but really nothing specific in mind with the long ball. Elgin doing a nice job there defensively, trying to keep her feet. Brianna Hunter at the back for Arkansas will just clear that away and says, my bad, didn't hit that the way she wanted to. Third year starter from Pflugerville, Texas. Steps into the tackle there and you could hear the reaction from the Arkansas bench again. They did not look themselves in the second half against Duke. So maintaining this energy and this competitiveness, which again is what they're known for, is the expectation this afternoon. And really being able to just match that. Four Goins for forced the turnover. Potagil running point. Taylor Malum trying to get forward. Driven low into Filippo. Head in her hands because she hit it well, but she hit it right at Claudia Dickey. Really nice build up by Arkansas. Getting quick touches in on that counter attack, being able to win the ball in that midfield space and quickly transition to the other end. Again, in the end, not enough to test Claudia Dickey in goal, but that's the type of movement from Arkansas and a quick release as well by DeFilippo De right around that penalty spot. Yeah, the speed of play there seemed like something to build on because everything was one and two touch, right? Malum hits the cross first time. DeFilippo takes it out of the air first time. It didn't work but it certainly was at the speed that it's going to need to be pulled off at at a high level. This is Cox, set up one, scored one on Thursday for Carolina, wins a corner. I almost feel like a little momentum shift here too, Jonathan, with perhaps that hydration break. It is 86 degrees, as you mentioned earlier, so.
just having that start, almost a restart, mentally refresh here for both teams. Third corner of the game and the third different taker for North Carolina. This is Paige Tolentino. Patterson the target, Macy Bell trying to get there. High and wide, and a foul called in the end anyway. Ava Tankersley preparing to come in for Arkansas, sophomore from the St. Louis area. And this is kind of where you expect a lot of it to be decided between North Carolina and Arkansas. Second and third balls, 50-50s bouncing around the middle. I think UNC doing a nice job too of matching what Arkansas does well with that battle. Just a little bit more energy, I think, even within the, the last five minutes from both of these teams. For Carolina, I think just a little bit more build up too in that attack when they have the ball possess a bit more that's their strength of where they can really be patient once they do have that ball to possess it North Carolina feels like it has one of the younger teams Anson Doran's not shy about that and is as we've told him, no one's going to cry for you, Anson. You've still got as much talent as anybody, but <laughs> it is a younger group. They start six teenagers, whereas Arkansas starts four players who are in their fifth year as full-time starters. So there is, there is a bit of an experience gap in places. And also players who do remember that 2019 victory over UNC. So again, something to build conf confidence off of. When we spoke to the coaches earlier, Coach Hale definitely mentioned that was something that they were able to take with them, that win against Carolina. Yeah, they actually have an astonishingly good record against top 10 and even top five teams over the last five years. Most of those games in Fayetteville, though. There you see, under Colby Hale, it took him a, a few years to win a game against the top 10 team. Since then, 500 soccer against top 10s. And that includes beating Duke, Florida, South Carolina, Texas A&M twice, and that win two years ago against number one UNC. And Arkansas and Texas A&M, the co-favorites in the SEC again this year. They tied for the regular season title last year, but Arkansas won the head-to-head -head game and won the West Division title. Set pieces are where Arkansas has created so many chances for so long, but unable to be particularly dangerous there. With B. Franklin, number eight, the transfer from Notre Dame, trying to get her head to it. Now tomorrow, our Miami football theme night starts with the next ACC football road trip destination, Coral Gables. You'll hear from Manny Diaz and the Hurricanes. You'll get an inside look around the campus. Coverage starts tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. So DeFilippo comes out, Tankersley in. They both started on Thursday night. We have yet to see the thousands of players in the three different shapes that we were promised <laughs> from Colby Hale in Arkansas, maybe because it's going pretty well. They've only given up a couple of opportunities, North Carolina with a slim 3-2 edge in the shot department. And to be able to really test themselves, both teams so early on, you know, that's why this game is so important to, to both of these teams here. And Coach Hale said, you know, he's modeled as much as he can uh, himself against Anson Dorrance and really being able to test his team early 
in the season to prepare for games that maybe they're not necessarily going to see uh, leading into the NCAA tournament time. Emerson Elgin bloodied from that last challenge, the freshman from Ramapo High School in North Jersey. And so it'll be Abby Allen, the sophomore from Austin, to come on. Started much of last year. And you saw the Tar Heels getting the second unit ready to come on. They will, we expect, switch to a 4-2-3-1. A lot of years you see North Carolina run the second unit in in its same system, but this year they're using two different ones, and they, as much as possible, train in those different setups. So this will be uh, six or seven coming in at once for North Carolina. This is something we should expect to see out of Carolina, too, just early on, trying different formations, trying different tactical lineups. Three is Ruby Grant, who had two goals Thursday, won a penalty kick. English freshman who, well, second year freshman, I guess, came in last spring and hit the ground running as a starter. There's Grant. She's one of the many to check in. Tori Hansen, number 22. Macy Bell will stay on. She typically won't come off the field if they can help it. And this will be a Carolina throw. We talked about momentum swings, and already these fresh legs and this second unit have swung it a little bit in the Tar Heels' favor. Warner can only punch it. And nobody from Carolina could turn it on target. Talking about the fresh legs coming in here. And it was Maggie Pierce on the other end of it, but that service in the box by Dorwart. And unable to convert, but a wide open net as Warner came across to make that initial punch away. UNC not able to get it on the frame. There's a lot going on. Emerson Elgin just announced is re-entering the game because it was a head injury. They were able to take her out and have her come back in. And then I believe Tolan, she technically comes in for Abby Allen, who then comes in herself for Tolentino. Trying to keep track of who's on the field for North Carolina is my job. You don't worry about it. No score, 32nd minute in a top 15 matchup. Had some good ones this weekend already. Told you Florida State got a late goal to beat Texas A&M Thursday night in the top 10 battle. Auburn upset number 15 BYU last night on the Plains. And there's a whole lot more going on right now. Kayla McKeon, the sixth year senior from Arkansas, whistled for the foul. Thirty-third minute, no score. Tremendous afternoon in Chapel Hill. North Carolina again pretty comfortable in that 4-1 win over Washington on Thursday. Has not looked as comfortable in this one. Ankersley couldn't get past the right side of the UNC defense. Hanson trying to turn, and Bell just has to knock it toward the halfway line. That's where Arkansas is doing a nice job, just disrupting 
the play of Carolina. And Carolina likes to hold on, possess that ball, change the point of attack, but Arkansas is able to be disruptive a little bit more right now, not allowing Carolina to make that build up. Emily Hauser, sophomore from Florida, who scored in the SEC semifinals last year and started seven of her 12 appearances in for Van Fossen at the back. What's it like, Angela, do you have a point of reference uh, to go against kind of two such distinct formations in a first half, right? UNC brings in a whole other group, fresh legs, and it's a different shape you have to adjust to. What's it like to be on the other side of that? Yeah, it's really challenging in that moment as a player, especially on the field, to be able to take everything that's being adjusted on the opposite side to really implement any type of tactical adjustments quickly that maybe you've been prepared for by your, your coaching staff. So it's really a matter of how quickly you can transition. Arkansas trying to thrive in transition themselves there. But Goins' shot was blocked. Tremendous step up from right back. It's Lauren Wrigley who we've seen in the midfield as well. She started it. Cox on the run. Twisted and turned one too many times, and Arkansas able to break it up. And look at the space on the field. There's all kinds of separation right now. Tankersley saw her cross deflected first. Arkansas corner. Yeah, that's the, the quickness in that transition. Carolina trying to get defenders back into space as Arkansas is taking that ball down the field. And you, you saw it too, Jonathan, all that space on our near right side. Some ways to take advantage of that transitional game. Parker Goins to take the corner for the Razorbacks. Second ball, allowed to drop. Actually, pretty decent resurface, but nobody on the end of it, and it'll be a Carolina goal kick. Van Fitch on. Freshman, they really like at Arkansas. Another one from Jenks, Oklahoma. They're big in recruiting Oklahoma. And Ava Benedetti in as well for the Razorbacks who are getting some pressure on this second unit of North Carolina. We weren't sure who would play right back, and Wrigley, 11 in white, is there for the moment. We saw her in midfield on Thursday, being pressured by Benedetti, 31 there. That's some of the chaos we expected to see. Good recovery work by Ali Gambone, 16 for North Carolina from this left wing spot. As Arkansas is starting to apply more pressure on that back line of Carolina, Gambone does a nice job really to help relieve some of that pressure. What hard collision there sent Wrigley into the Arkansas bench. Not going to get a helping hand there. Oh, 
tough challenge, actually, after oh. Wrigley yeah. plays that ball. Benedetti takes her out. Junior transfer from Seattle University, but she played for the Portland Thorns Academy. Portland Thorns had a good night last night, late. Benedetti uh, trying to follow it up today, starts off with a yellow card instead. If you went to bed at a normal hour, the Thorns beat Olympique Lyonnais in the International Champions Cup final last night in Portland on a Morgan Weaver goal. As Hannah Warner able to save that one. Elgin do doing a nice job. Arkansas almost expecting her to pass that ball. Unable to step quick enough. Elgin takes it herself. Takes the shot. She knows how to set goals, Emerson Elgin. Yeah. She yep. told NorthJersey.com, I want to win the World Cup. I want to win the gold medal in the Olympics. I want to captain the national team, and I want to win a national championship at North Carolina. She's a freshman. This was in April when she was setting those. So good. Aim high, and she's on her way. Here's Cox on the other side. Working against Delaney, knocked out for a corner. Kai Hayes checking in. Fourth North Carolina corner will have a fourth different taker and we'll also get Arkansas subs. Cora Dunnick, number 25, transfer from Liberty. And Sophia Aragon, freshman from California. Collision back there. Tori Hansen was shoved down. No video review for that kind of decision in the college game. Arkansas trying to counter. Tankersley can't get there. And now it kind of feels like Arkansas is holding on and North Carolina is threatening to end the half. Let's see, Hansen almost just looks like she got tripped up there. Unintentional. But really, after that play, just the, the ability to, to knock people off the ball, hold on to it from Arkansas, and get that ball into the other attacking third. Is that a knee pass from Macy Bell? I don't see that in too many training sessions. If anybody could... Pull that off, I'd say it would be Macy Bell, <laughs> to, do, to do it well. <laughs> She's been in training with the North Carolina Courage first team whenever possible. <laughs> this is Lauren Wrigley stepping forward. Tripped up. And it's a free kick for the Tar Heels. Kylie Delaney with the foul. You see how Wrigley is just able to take up a lot of space. She's been able to set, set some attack from that back line. Again, Arkansas just needing to step up. Almost a little bit surprised. Carolina having that ability to take up some space and, and dribble without distributing the ball. Lauren Wrigley said she wanted to go to Duke at first, which is kind of ironic now, but she figured it out. Once she saw the stadium, she was hooked. Ruby Grant to deliver. 
Second ball, miss hit by Hayes, kept alive. And in the end, Ali Gambone whistled for the foul, and I think because of the potential tactical nature of it, gets the yellow card for taking down Dunnick. Initially, it looked like it was Gambone's elbow that caught Dunnick. But actually, some good physical play there. Almost looked shoulder to shoulder and that last replay. But Gambone takes that yellow card away. Seven assists last year for Ali Gambone. Three of them came in one game, but seven still quite a good number, especially when you only play about half the time, as most Carolina players do. Benedetti trying to get the cross in. It'll just be a goal kick. Forty-third minute. No score yet. And not a lot of scoring chances, to be honest. Shots are 6-3 officially. Angela, you surprised we haven't had a few more fireworks, a few more guilt edge chances? <laughs> no, I'm not surprised by the low shot count. I think also what we were expecting out of Arkansas, just that physical matchup against Carolina. Carolina really being disrupted a bit. And this is, this is the reason why they wanted, both teams wanted to have this test right now to make those adjustments, figure out what they need to do on the field in real time as these players. That press paying off for Arkansas and Claudia Dickey first out to it. A little unorthodox, but got it away. Seeing some of that chaos right now as it's pumped forward. Arkansas throw. Gambone trying to take the throw in there. See if Arkansas can press a little bit. Time winding down on the first half, top 15 matchup. Couple of chances, but none stood out and certainly none broke through. Scoreless at the half. Angela, who gets the who gets the edge from you for this first 45? Uh, it went back and forth, I feel like, so much during that first half. And I think it's, it's up for grabs, really, in the second half. A little bit more urgency at times, I think, uh, in the attack. And, Carolina looking to hold the ball a bit more in that attacking third, but Arkansas just needing to get some more shots, take advantage of that transitional game in the spaces that Carolina have on the outside back position. No score yet. Both teams looking to create and finish those chances in the second half. ACC Network Live Sports back at you for year three. North Carolina and Arkansas battling hard, but still scoreless. We'll have a halftime report, a look at the Olympics, and a look at the highlights from this one. North Carolina and Arkansas, no score yet in Chapel Hill. <music> halftime in Chapel Hill between North Carolina and Arkansas, battle of the ACC and SEC. And we take a look back at the ACC final from last year and some of the big contributions these conferences have made.
North Carolina and Florida State face off for the ACC Championship. Ball into the box! Yeah. And it's in the goal! Florida State has done it! A goal in the opening minute! Robbins will take her shot on the close of it! Oh my goodness, Clara Robbins! <laughs> Nesbitt to assist in the first half. One of those coming off the corner. She gets on the ball again in the box. All right, sorry Tar Heel fans, we got through that, but you do have some representation. ACC players, as always, Angela, representing at the Olympics for the U.S. I mean, ACC, just a, a pure developmental ground for those professional ranks, uh, the national, international level as well. And, and just take a look at this lineup. Two Virginia players, two Carolina, and then a BC, Florida State player as well. Fantastical, fantastic, and phenomenal talent. Of course, UNC playing Arkansas today, so we turn our attention to the SEC. Arkansas also no stranger to SEC title game heartbreak. It has been a roller coaster 2020 in more ways than we can count, and yet here we are at the finish line. Potagil for Goins. Ball bounces down to the penalty spot. The opening goal is in the opening minute. Hopkins goes down. Ryan Parvar, terrific penalty. Vanderbilt levels this. Azari got the cross away. Kelly! Vanderbilt from a goal down takes the lead. Brighton can go from here. Brighton! Oh, it's in! Another highlight real goal for Abby Brighton. 2020, the Commodores are SEC champions again. Five straight losses in SEC title games. Arkansas is going to be looking for redemption, kind of like Canada got at the Olympics with some SEC faces, Angela. I mean, to be able to bring home for them the gold medal from Canada, Deanne Rose, Alyssa, Alyssa Chapman, and Adriana Leon did a phenomenal job representing their country of Canada. But look at that talent coming out of the SEC as well. ACC and SEC squaring off often in this opening weekend. Much more still to come from Chapel Hill, Arkansas, and North Carolina getting us started. No score at halftime of our game between North Carolina and Arkansas, but this is just part of the Carolina Classic. And about seven miles away in Durham, they have just finished up the other game of the day. Duke and Washington, another top 20 battle. And the Duke freshman, Michelle Cooper. Angela, this is the piece they have needed up front. She is the goal scorer. Dynamic goal scoring machine out of Michelle Cooper. Getting the early lead here for Duke against Washington 1-0 right now. Washington did tie it up, though. 81st minute. And then that 81st minute, tying it up. Gates getting that equalizer. Nice turn, nice finish in between some Duke defenders. 1-1. One, one. But there was some drama. Maybe we'll get some drama like this. 88th minute, Mackenzie Pluck, who drew two penalty kicks on Thursday, stays on her feet to score the game-winning goal here. Cooper threading the needle to find Pluck to get that game winner for Duke. 2-1. to one. Tough butt battle by both teams. Duke in the end, two to one. Great finish there. We'll see who has the second half drama in store for us in Chapel Hill. No score at the half. Second half kick coming up shortly. Come. Getting ready to start the second half in Chapel Hill. No score yet between number 13 Arkansas and number three North Carolina. First of three women's soccer games on this Sunday here on ACC Network. Jonathan Yardley and the former gold medalist. I guess you're always a gold medalist. Angela Hughley is watching this one with you. Angela, what did you make of that first half? We're going to get direct play from both teams. Did either team get an advantage for you? 
Uh, not yet. I think we still there's still yet to see in the second half, both teams going back and forth a little bit, taking advantage of, of that transitional game, having a few set pieces, but no one team really exerting and standing out above the other. other. So it'll be interesting to see the second half start. We turn to our first half highlights. Honestly, there weren't that many big scoring chances to choose from, but we found a couple, including this clinical in so many ways counterattack from Arkansas. Yeah, this is one of those transitional moments. Arkansas did a really nice job. Potajil just chewing up some space, holding on to that ball to get it out wide to Malum, who serves that ball across. DiFilippo standing at the penalty spot for that shot, unable to convert. But again, an opportunity in that transition for Arkansas. And then North and Carolina then, forced a couple of saves, but this was really their best chance. It's going to be a shot that's blocked. Yeah, and Warner does that initial punching away of the ball. Maggie Pierce trying to take that shot. But as you said, Arkansas able to step in front and block that. Here are the numbers. 5-3, the official shot edge for North Carolina. One yellow card apiece. Remember, North Carolina not shut out at all last year. They scored in all 20 games, scoreless through 45 minutes here in their second game of the year against Arkansas. So what do you look for, Angela, to turn the tide in the second half? Uh, I, I think Arkansas certainly needs to put together the full 90 minutes that maybe we didn't see against Duke. They weren't happy with their second half on Thursday night. Where do you see uh, the decisive moment coming? Definitely. I think, and also that last just statistical sh shot of looking shots on goal was one to one for each team. So I think when you look back at the keys for Carolina that I had in terms of being patient in the attack, holding the ball a bit more in the attacking third so that they're able to create those opportunities, get some more shots on goal. And then also for Arkansas, I mean, you said it, Jonathan, putting both halves together, having a bit more urgency in their transition and having some more pace so that they're able to counter quickly against North Carolina's defense and hopefully looking for those shots on goal as well. Arkansas used eight subs in the first half. North Carolina used 10, but North Carolina saw a lot more minutes. So we'll see just how often Colby Hale runs them in and out in the second half, trying to keep the legs fresh as North Carolina will, again, we expect use two units in this second half. Emily Murphy had the Tar Heels opening goal against Washington on Thursday. And it looks like Isabel Cox is going to start the second half. So Anson Dorrance certainly likes the way she's been playing both Thursday and so far this afternoon. You usually see him go back to the same, same 11. So Cox will stay in there to start the second half for UNC. Arkansas on the road trying to spring the upset of North Carolina for the second time in three years in red. Gets us underway in the second half. North Carolina in white trying to stay unbeaten at Dorrance Field since it opened for business back in 2019, so just a couple of years old. They haven't lost on campus in five years. They did play their home schedule off campus at Cary for a couple years while Fetzer Field was being turned into this gem of a stadium you see. Hanson Dorrance so proud of it. And he got his name. I think he's got a, a good right to be. This is Emily Moxley for North Carolina. Cox gets the ball back after the great move. Drives it across. Arkansas dealt with it for the moment, but not all the way out. Cox wasn't ready for the pass when Meza played it, and it'll be an Arkansas throw. And getting into that attacking third all the way and, and doing that already by Carolina. Just a little miscommunication there by Cox and Meza. 
But this is the space that they want to hold that ball. And that may be the kind of miscommunication we don't see in a month when it's ACC play and players have spent more time together in these combinations. Murphy trying to turn. Shot was blocked off the boot of Libby Moore. Now Meza on the dribble. Murphy's header back across goal, but not on target. Really bright start to the second half for North Carolina. And more Meza, the way that she was able to hold on to that ball, possess, distribute, get the ball wide, and then Murphy creating that space, backing up a bit more, has a really nice look. Unable to put that one in frame. Again, these are the moments, too. You want to start finding more shots on goal, but she is wide open on that backside. Good look by Carolina. UNC on the move again. Lauren Wrigley stayed in to start the second half as well. She's in the midfield this time and wins it back. Meza number one, you see her stop on a dime and change directions. Turn down the lead in a Netflix film to be on campus and play for UNC this fall. I mean, they were ready to cast her as the lead in a soccer movie because great soccer player, great personality. And then they, the shooting schedule came out and it was in Europe and it ran right through, I think, the end of October. And uh, everybody kind of grimaced at that point and she had to back out, but maybe someday. Free kick chance for North Carolina. The ball has been in this half of the field just about since the restart. Bodies flying everywhere and Cox frustrated with herself after heading that wide. Macy Bell still trying to get up for North Carolina. There's that entanglement. Bell, and in the end, it looked like it was De Filippo. But it looks like Bell just actually tripped maybe off that heel of De Filippo. So as best as we can tell, it is starters back in the game for Arkansas. And for North Carolina, it is Cox, 13, and Wrigley, 11. The holdovers from the second group to start this second half. Avery Patterson out of the back. Too high for Cox, but too high for Van Fossen as well. Hunter went into that. It looked like casually, but she did well in the end. Arkansas struggling to string passes together, though, in this second half. Opportunity driven and blocked once again. And Meza's shot sailed high. It has been all Carolina. First four shots of this second half. Well, Carolina just doing a nice job of building up that attack. Again, a little bit of a defensive error here, but Carolina able to serve that ball into the box. Also finding those deeper pockets, allowing to pull the ball back to have a good look and strike. Meza trying to find, be the finisher on that last one, get it underneath it. Again, just looking to have a little bit more quality, getting more strikes on goal, but Carolina definitely creating opportunities. See, already almost as many shots as North Carolina had in the entire first half. And again, the lineup tweak is Libby Moore, number 20, who started the game as a holding mid. 
is playing the left wing back spot. I don't think they wanted any more minutes for Della Peruta. And so Wrigley has stayed in in the midfield spot, formerly occupied by Moore. There's Libby Moore. She's played right back, D mid, and now left wing back on the season. And we're just in the fourth half. <laughs> Welcome to college soccer. That's the par for the course, especially uh, with these two programs. Headed down, who's going to get onto the end of it? Arkansas just let it run, and Murphy does keep it in play. It looked like the temperature rose a little bit from first half to second, hitting 90 degrees. So as this game goes on a little bit, you saw there Arkansas just not tracking that ball down. The rotation of Carolina being able to put fresh players in. How will that factor into the fatigue element as this game wears on? I'm going to say it gets plenty hot in Fayetteville, so they're used to that. But as you said, facing the fresh legs of Carolina is a real chore. And already, I think the quickness, the first step has turned in North Carolina's favor. They don't have enough benches or a big enough technical area to fit the entire <laughs> North Carolina roster, by the way. It's 38 players. You'd think they'd have that uh, in the developmental plans. <laughs> right? I mean, Anson, you know, was a big contributor to how the stadium was designed. You'd think an extra big bench, extra big technical area might have been part of that. <laughs> And Arkansas will start with the subbing early in this second half. Franklin and Delaney coming off. So Dunnick 25 and Hauser 20, both in. That is offside. You could see Anna Potajo calling for it, but she's a track star, but she's not that fast. Broke in behind the back line. Her younger sister, Ellie, unavailable this weekend. We didn't get any more details on that, but she played just about every minute in the midfield for Arkansas last year, so that's a big piece they are missing right now. Again, similarly to North Carolina, nobody's crying any tears for Colby Hale, who brings back 11 starters from a Sweet 16 team. Elgin trying to connect with Emily Colton. This is Colton again. We'll see her twin sister later tonight playing for Wake Forest. And her twin sister, Abby, had one of the best flexes I've ever seen in a, an online bio. They're twins, right? On Abby's Wake Forest bio, it just says, younger sister Emily plays at North Carolina. Like, I'm the older twin, don't ever forget it. Let's go, Neil! <laughs> <laughs> just putting it out there. <laughs> So if you're watching the 7 o'clock game, look for, for Abby Colton. That's, that's how she rolls. <laughs> so Rachel Jones back in here replacing Cox, who got a few extra minutes. And we will probably see her again. Hey, give credit to the builders, Angela. They did design it so the technical areas would successfully be in shade at this part of the day. That is true. They're just trying to get closer to the field, I think. <laughs> Great run by Murphy. Opened up some space for Jones. Gets it back. And drew the foul. Middle of the field from Hauser. Yeah, just that movement by Murphy allowed Jones to take a few additional steps centrally, set up a good look now in this set piece. 
right in front of the goal. Hannah Warner, the Arkansas keeper. I guess Rachel Jones is hitting this. No other options. In the end, didn't trouble Warner too much as it came around on one bounce. Elgin under pressure there. Again, a late challenge. It's just going to be given as a throw-in, apparently. That's not going to thrill the locals. Yeah, Elgin doing a nice job getting out of pressure. But again, just some of the, some of the contact being made outside the field of play there. So Goins can reach the penalty area from here with the long throw. Instead targeting De Filippo. Three Razorbacks crowd around Colton. Goins cross held by Dickey. And North Carolina will try to go quickly the other way. Broken up by Emily Hauser. That was actually a really good save by Dickey there, too. Coming quickly off her line to get that little bit of a, a transition, too, from that long throw by Goins, but, or absence of the long throw, I should say. And we should mention, typically North Carolina, if their goalkeepers are tight, will rotate them. Two years ago, Dickey and Mars Josephson split the minutes, but Josephson hurt, still coming back from that injury she played in preseason. Dickey is the clear number one, and for now, and for the foreseeable future, will play every minute for North Carolina. Great pass by Jones. Emily Colton missed it wide. Closed down, colliding with Warner. And that is a troublesome sight on both sides. The shot wide by UNC. And the starting goalkeeper down for Arkansas. It was a great what connection a from Colton there. and Jones. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably one of the best opportunities Carolina has had this entire match. When Jones picks that ball up, that little movement there by Colton, that first touch to set herself up. Warner closes that ball down just enough to force that error by Colton, but that first touch set Colton up, was unable to make that little chip over Warner, but the best look Carolina's had in this entire match. Has great off-ball movement by Colton. And Jones was able to find her. I mean, it's got to be a little motivating when your coach doesn't start you for the second half when that would normally be the case, right? And Rachel Jones comes back in the game with a point to prove. Angela, you played at Virginia. You had to face this two-tier system of North Carolina where one group runs at you for 20 minutes and then another group runs at you for the rest. How did you deal with it? I mean, it's crazy that <laughs> Anson's been doing this for, what, 30, 40 years almost now. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's one of those things, especially when when I played, it was a, a much younger in the development of the women's game, respectively. So, you know, that was a big deal. Now I feel like there's more depth in the game. So back then, it was just like you're starting a brand new soccer match when you saw that second line coming from Carolina. Christina Uncle being called over to look at the replay monitor, and you saw a few of the things. Replays only officiated by the officiating crew and only for select things. 
I mean, I'm looking at the list right now. I can only think this is for some kind of collision off the ball or, or action that we didn't see. It, it's not a timing issue, and there was no goal scored. So unless we're clarifying a yellow card, which I don't expect, I'll, I'll be curious to see. Timing is also one of the options. There was an infamous timing incident here last year in a men's game between UNC and Clemson that resulted in Carolina winning with one second on the clock. Colby Hale saying, if you want to take another 10 minutes off, I'm good with that. <laughs> So Ross McKernan was the fourth official, and Christina Uncle, the referee, ready to resume. And you can see they took about 20 more seconds off. Fifth corner of the game for North Carolina. Murphy the target. Another corner coming. It's going to be a long 30 minutes for Arkansas. You can see, and this isn't even North Carolina's freshest group right now. You can see the extra spring in their step. Rachel Jones. Meza has options. Elgin gets it back to Sam Meza. Miss hit that, but clearance was not authoritative. Tar Heels keep it. Rachel Jones running at the back line, curling it with the left. It's blocked. Meza drives. That took a deflection as well. Warner will take her sweet time with this to give Arkansas time to reorganize, regroup, and catch their breath. And those are the opportunities, too, here for Carolina. And still early on in the season, looking at how they can hold on to that ball a little bit longer and just a little bit cleaner on the connections. Saw Meza having a strike, Murphy holding on to that ball. We saw the second half shot total, and again, Duke was all over Arkansas in second half shots on Thursday night as well. Oh, we have it. We are on top of that for you. <laughs> and we will get all the subs come in. Everybody except Macy Bell, probably. I'm good. I'm an Iron Man, Iron Woman. I'm staying on. We talked about opening for Arkansas with such a tough schedule at Duke, at North Carolina. Doesn't get that much easier. They will be home, but they have BYU coming in, another top 20 team on Monday. And now BYU is going to be coming in frustrated after losing at Auburn. But I don't think anyone's schedule compares to North Carolina, certainly not the home schedule. They'll play at Illinois and at Ohio State next weekend. Northwestern and, oh yeah, Stanford come in the week after that. Then at Florida, at UCF. And then ACC play opens, same night as SEC play, September 17th. Carolina will play Duke, and Arkansas will play Tennessee. And unlike last year, where we wound up with Carolina and Florida State both 8-0, and then Virginia was third at 5-2-1, and 
They will play each other, the top two, top three teams, all in the regular season. Ava Tankersley sending that one wide. I think I am probably going to give up the ghost on keeping track of substitutions, so we'll figure it out. I believe in you, Jonathan. You got <laughs> no, that. No, no, I'm, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I don't have enough time to write it all down. <laughs> Fitch and Tankersley are the two highest right now pressing. Pressure got it away. McKenna Dominguez, 27, in for the first time today. The freshman right back. Anson Dorrance said she was electric against Washington on Thursday. Out of Sierra Madre, California. And we will take the second hydration break right here. Still no score between Arkansas and North Carolina. The Tar Heels adding up the pressure right now. We'll see if the break helps the Razorbacks. Back here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina number two in the preseason poll, just the way they finished last year behind Florida State. Virginia number three. Angela, how about adding Haley Hopkins as a transfer from Vanderbilt to a, an attacking unit that already has Ordonez, Jarrett, and Spanstra. They're, they're at West Virginia today. Duke and Clemson, and then it feels like there's a kind of a, a big group of teams that are all competing to finish sixth because only six make the ACC tournament this year. What do you think? Yeah, and I think you always look at those the, as the big three, right? Florida State, North Carolina, Virginia, but I think some of the additions that we've seen uh, looking at Cooper and Duke, I mean, it's always contested that those top three positions. But as you said, Jonathan, that number six is going to be really interesting to see who winds up and how this shapes out in the ACC against such great talent coming out of this conference. Again, Notre Dame, tremendous recruiting class coming in as Isabel Cox is back in for Carolina. Notre Dame, tremendous recruiting class, beat Bowling Green on Thursday night. They play at 4 o'clock today against Indiana. And then Wake Forest, which is also a young team, but got back one of its international players, Holda Arner's daughter, who missed last year due to COVID, re-enrolled this year. And so she's available. That's a big experience boost. They play high point at 7. Kind of scraped by with a late goal to win their opener on Thursday. So those are some of the games you can see. Syracuse won its opener today. You'll see them against Niagara on Thursday. And that whole schedule available online at either ESPN or ESPN.com or the ACC.com. 67th minute and it's Emerson Elgin coming over to take North Carolina's seventh corner. Looked like she might have tweaked something in delivering yeah. that. I'm not sure the delivery necessary that Elgin wanted, but definitely limping a little bit. I mean, she was probably going to switch back to the left anyway, but yeah, she's going to need to come out. Never something you want to see. She's been one of the many bright spots in this freshman class. North Carolina, no Julia Dorsey yet. She plays soccer and lacrosse, so she was with 
lacrosse in the spring, had surgery over the summer. Expect her back during conference play, maybe in October. And they won't have Ali Sentnor this year, number one player in the country for the 2022 class. She reclassified up to 2021 and was killing it in preseason, we are told, was starting up top with Murphy. And you see Sentnor in the middle with the sunglasses. And 15 minutes, I think it was, into the first preseason game. Tore her ACL and will miss the year. So nobody's at full strength. You almost never are, honestly, in the college soccer team or season. But Arkansas hanging on against North Carolina here. I mean, Angela, the biggest thing coming out of that Duke game was Arkansas, we didn't look like us. Do you right. feel like this looks more like the way Arkansas wants to set up, wants to compete? I think definitely better than that Duke game. I still think there's another another level, another level of intensity that we haven't seen from them yet. But I think that's that next gear. It's still early on in the season. Ruby Grant, Cox. Warner with one save, sprawls and grabs onto the rebound after Gambone tried to get to it. And having Probably said that, her toughest stop yet. Arkansas still being early on in the season. The save by Warner definitely looks like she has played in that quick reactivity. As Carolina looks to take the initial shot and is able to get down and then make that second save as well. Excellent stop shot by Warner. You're gonna have to educate me on the lingo. I've been around the game a while, uh, not as long, not as long as you. I don't think I'd ever heard "played in" as a thing until this week, and this week I felt like I heard it 40 times. There you go. So what does it mean? <laughs> oh, you don't know. You do. <laughs> no, I don't. No, yeah, I mean, she's. I need the education. I was just saying, in terms of just this being such early game in the season, I mean, she looks like she's been playing the season for much longer than she has. Just that the reactiveness, her mental focus there to tune in quickly. All right, good. I'm, I'm caught up and ready for the virtual water cooler. Now we have to use that phrase a few more times in this match, I think. <laughs> Seventieth minute, no score, Arkansas and North Carolina. Arkansas certainly has rebounded from its 3-1 loss to Duke on Thursday. Probably had the best chance in the first half. But North Carolina has looked fresher, looked the more likely to score in this second half. Remember two years ago in Fayetteville, it was two goals in the second half for Arkansas. Dickey was splitting time with Josephson. They were scored against Dickey that lifted Arkansas, so they have some second half experience as Arkansas will make wholesale changes. And I think as, as this game continues and the score line remains the same, it, it definitely favors Arkansas a bit more, I think, than Carolina. I don't know, those legs look like they're starting to go sometimes. With just that ability to convert when those opportunities are created. Here we go. Oh, just out of reach of Rachel Dorward. She only scores in the postseason. Hanson kept it moving. Maggie Pierce just in on the far side near the Carolina bench right now. Kai Hayes looking forward. Gambone. Neat footwork by Goins. The switch is on if she can find it. She was closed down. There's the pass. And a long ball, no problem for Dickey. 
Now Wednesday, our ACC football road trip rolls on. We're up to Florida State. Here from Mike Norvell, some of the Seminole stars, and take a look around the Tallahassee campus. One hour show starting 7 o'clock Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap at Florida State Wednesday night. Tori Hansen made one miss. Too far for Ruby Grant, and that'll be a goal kick. Carolina group will re-enter. clear on what formation they're playing when given the back and forth and it's it's not kind of a pure A group and B group I think that's probably one of the most impressive things too when you look at someone like a, a Macy Bell who is playing with a completely different line of, of players with those rotations you would say how does how do they train both formations with Macy Bell in both. Another corner kick coming for North Carolina. Reagan Swindle with the headed clear. Second year starter from Rockwall High School in Texas. Texas and Oklahoma, the main recruiting ground for Arkansas. Van Fossen, Mallon, and Goins. All from the same club team. They had Nayeli Perez from there as well. Warner did get a punch to that. She doesn't really like to leave the six yard box on the corners from what I've seen of her, but inside the six, she was able to get that away. Driven, punched away. Avery Patterson lined that up and hit it clean. And Hannah Warner was there to stop it. I love the three approach steps too. Patterson had so much time seeing that ball driven out towards her one, two, three and shot. Cranks this one, Warner again. So nice off that line there with that save, punching that away from danger because Macy Bell was lurking on that far post. Right. She didn't just make the save. She was able to move the rebound and no one in white was in the area. And that's just a little bit, I think, too, of reacting a bit more with the cues. Arkansas slow to get off that defensive line stepping towards that shot. Poked away by Swindle for a UNC throw. Della Peruta back in now. All kinds of space in the penalty area for North Carolina, and that one right to Warner. That tells the story, 11-2 shot advantage in the second half for North Carolina. Another throw in for Taylor Malum on the near side. She's been playing with Parker Goins since they were in kindergarten. Their team was the Butterflies. And everybody wondered how did they get Parker Goins, who was being recruited by North Carolina and Arkansas, 
to pick Arkansas. And you have to figure playing with Malum had something to do with that. I remember first covering Arkansas about seven years ago and Colby Hale said, yeah, we, we got a kid from North Carolina. It's the first time anyone's ever picked Arkansas over North Carolina. And you're kind of like, yeah, okay. Well, we asked Anson Dorrance and he knew right away which player we were talking about. And of course, Goen scored in that two nothing win for the Razorbacks over North Carolina two years ago. More subs, Dunnick 25, grad transfer. Hauser in once again. I think it's harder to find a rhythm for North Carolina players, Angela. I mean, you play 20 minutes at a time. You're starting to feel, sometimes you're starting to feel good and you, you come off. I think they're trained for that type of rhythm, though. I think it's not as hard as maybe for another collegiate player to come into that, but this is the way that Carolina trains these systems and these players, so that come game time, they are used to that ro rotation and that rhythm. I think the biggest challenge right now is just getting everyone on the same page. You know, freshmen coming in to these environments and being early in the season, how they can build that chemistry. And when you look at a Carolina, also getting adjusted to what that expectation really is with those, those quick changes and switches. Played at Oral Roberts, Colby Hale, longtime assistant at UCF under Amanda Cromwell. He had a great story if you listen to the College Soccer Nation podcast with Matt Mott and Chris Petroselli. And Colby Hale told him a story of calling Amanda Cromwell to apply for a job at UCF. You know, and one of his bosses had said, oh yeah, I'll recommend you to her. And he called her up and she had no idea who he was. He's like, this is Colby. And she's like, who? <laughs> Colby Hale. I'm sorry, what? Coach from Oral Roberts. Yeah, I, I don't know who you are. <laughs> That's how it started. And he managed to talk his way into the job, which tells you something about Colby Hale. <laughs> Into the final 10 minutes of regulation. That's a no-doubter. De Filippo, the guilty party in this case, and Avery Patterson, they were on the receiving end. Yeah, just when trying to start a little bit of momentum there, Carolina, De Filippo coming in hard with that challenge. Let's see Christina Uncle checking the C, I think also a potential yellow card. I thought it would be actually. I was a little surprised. Macy Bell got her head to that, but Warner reached it before Abby Allen could get there. That was the Macy Bell we highlighted back in the open. B. Franklin, the player down, junior from Seattle. Her brother played in the College World Series for Michigan, is absolutely tearing it up for the Rome Braves. See just how high Macy Bill gets up there, too. Looks like maybe just not a whole lot of contact. Can't really tell there. Maybe it's just on the foot at the end. 
Mary Bell came down on the foot there. Eighty second minute here. As for the second straight game, Colby Hale has to go out on the field and check on one of his players. It was Van Fossen who was shaken up late in the Duke contest. They're treating it like a cramp, but they're also getting out there to make sure she gets off okay. And Arkansas will certainly use this to get everybody a breather. Now, a reminder, during the week, you can get the latest news and information from around the ACC each morning. Special guests from the world of sports with Packer and Durham. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on ACC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. I don't know how they do it, how they manage to keep track of what's going on in all the different sports, because the ACC has so many. They, of course, talk football. They, of course, talk basketball. But they really do get around to the others as well. And they are back together in studio, at least for the time being, in home studio. That is how it was set up. We are watching this with you from Chapel Hill. North Carolina, number three in the country, coming off of a College Cup appearance last year. Hosting number 13, Arkansas, which beat them the last time they played two years ago. Angela Hughley's Jonathan Yardley watching, and large cast of characters will be bringing you ACC soccer coverage this year. We're going to be subbing as much as these two teams are rotating. This will be an Arkansas throw on the far side. A lot of contact there. And <laughs> Goins is okay with it since it was caught. Getting a little talking to there by referee Christina Uncle. Just see hands go up, easy call to make. Sister Carly is a senior at Texas, and younger sister Mallory will play at Colorado next year. The Allen sisters, who were born in Arkansas, <laughs> in Bentonville, so not far from Fayetteville. Eighty-third minute free kick chance for Arkansas. This is their bread and butter usually. And they earn a corner from it. Della Peruta a little frustrated that that one wound up out of bounds. They're not quite calling the hogs, but the folks who made the drive or caught the flight from Fayetteville are making some noise right now. Parker Goins to deliver Arkansas's second corner of the game as they load up the six-yard box. All the way, knocked away by Dickey, kept alive. And cleared out of the six by North Carolina. Rachel Jones getting it done on the goal line, and she's fired up. Goins sends a really nice textured ball in. Bending towards Dickey, who has to make that initial save. So many bodies in the box. Carolina just trying to clear it off. Jones gets off that line. Dickey's down there as well. Opportunity for Arkansas there. If you're Arkansas, don't you ask for that to be reviewed just in case the ball crossed the line and you can get a little breather? Or do you want to capitalize on the momentum here? I know you, I know you can't going. officially request. It has to be the official, but... Keep it going. There was nothing. You mean you could definitely tell. Jones had that she one was, cleared off. She was shooting though, right? 
Jones? <laughs> no, Go Goins, but with the the initial corner. It was bending in toward goal if, if yeah, he wasn't saying, there. Yeah. I'm saying that that was the one that I thought you could get reviewed. I didn't think it crossed the line either, but. Gotcha. You know, they, they put all those bodies in the six, and I think she was trying to bend it in. Oh, that's a bad sign to see the grimace on the face of Warner. Arkansas has two keepers with them, but they don't have the experience of Hannah Warner. Lexi Gonzalez and Peyton Woodward uh, interested onlookers right now. Let's see Warner kicking this ball. And then right there, loses her footing. Well, that's an interesting little subplot. Wrigley keeps it moving. Patterson. Cora Dunnick trying to get that one clear, but still facing down North Carolina pressure in the final five minutes and change. Moxley. Jones to the right foot, it's deflected, and Warner turns and dives on it. Jones looking for a shot, for some space, trying to get that one off. Credit Swindle for getting a foot to that. Yeah. Warner looks to be in good form too as well, being able to hop off that foot there. Murphy able to turn the diagonal ball. Della Peruzza was battling shoulder to shoulder with Emily Hauser. And it's out for a goal kick. Ava Tankersley returns. No goals to speak of, but plenty of intrigue at Dorrance Field. Arkansas seems to have found its second win. Tankersley's cross headed clear by Bell. Haley Van Fossen though stepping up to win it back. Bell a little casual there, pocket picked and it is a foul. Frustrating Tankersley and Mallon. Macy Bell from Wichita, she's a junior now. Still waiting for her to get that first senior national team call up, but it's coming. Oldest of six kids. Kind of get the sense she's used to cleaning up after everybody. Jones, great footwork to turn. Wants to go left. Brianna Hunter played it out off of Jones for a goal kick. Jones definitely adding to the intensity here in the attack for Carolina. Did Van Fossen dive again? Is that the third time this week?
<laughs> Let's see, trying to pick a little, start a little something there, but Murphy definitely pushes Van Fossen. She did get a yellow. You can see here, Van Fossen <laughs> instigates a little bit, but Murphy clearly pushing her. I was to say, there was more extension in the arms than I thought. Uh, Van Fossen's making the most of, of each of these, though. Oh. It'll be a Carolina free kick. Overtime looms. Sunday at UNC. Warner really unchallenged in the end. And a miss hit there. North Carolina chance to take the throw quickly. Colton. Della Peruta surrounded. And it's out for an Arkansas throw. Sister Tori arrives next year, National Player of the Year, down in Georgia by USA Today. Arkansas has Taylor Mallon's younger sister, Mackenzie, lined up for next year, the Oklahoma Player of the Year. So family connections always help in recruiting. Scoreless through 90 minutes, Angela. We're headed to overtime. What do you make of the 90? Because certainly Arkansas has responded to its defeat on Thursday. Definitely both teams having their moments. I think Carolina having a, more of the edge in the second half, more opportunities, more corner kicks. But Arkansas still hanging on and, and providing a challenge for Carolina to even get that go-ahead goal. Next goal wins. That's what we've got here. Arkansas and North Carolina scoreless. Overtime comes your way next. Limitless. Usually after 90 minutes, fans in Carolina Blue are walking to the car with a W in their pocket. Today we were set for overtime, scoreless. But right now we're in a weather delay. Lightning struck close to Dorrance Field. And so Arkansas and North Carolina players have gone to their locker rooms, fans headed to their cars or some sort of shelter. And we will break and hopefully resume this one with overtime once the weather permits. Jonathan Yardley and Angela Hughley's with you. Angela, we don't have any goals to talk about. What did you make of the performances, though? North Carolina maybe not as convincing as Thursday, whereas Arkansas certainly a good bounce back. Yeah, I think Arkansas definitely recovering from their last loss, but having a little bit more intensity versus Carolina. Carolina hasn't been able to really hold onto the ball a whole lot in that attacking third to create opportunities, at least in that first half. Second half, they came back out, I think showed a little bit more intensity, possession, but really creating some of those opportunities. We saw some set pieces as well as some corner kicks from Carolina in that second half. Yeah, in the second half, North Carolina, especially early, started fast, created a lot of chances. I think they got the first 11 of the first 13 shots of the second half, applying pressure everywhere and anywhere. And this was one of the best chances with Colton missing wide. Yeah, Colton wasn't able to convert on that, but just where Carolina is finding themselves deep in their attacking third, being able to take some shots, to be able to play the ball back as well, creating some goal scoring opportunities. That creation was definitely a lot better for Carolina. They weren't able to get as many shots on goal, but then started to have that production. And then we see here on the other side, Arkansas having an opportunity as well. Potagel sending that one close to the line 
and it was a scramble. Dickey getting down, Jones eventually clearing that one off the line as well. So each team having some opportunities, but Carolina really not able to convert when they were in that penalty spot area. Hannah Warner, the goalkeeping hero for Arkansas to keep it scoreless. No score through 90 minutes. We hope to have overtime for you when the weather permits. For right now, we're going to send you to the next program, which for you Tar Heel fans, ACC football road trip, North Carolina. We'll be back with soccer when allowed.